here for. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition, so you will not grow weary and lose heart. Victory for the battle belongs 
close to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to you, God. something and I wanted to share it with you. I have right here two things. They're pretty different. Let me tell you about them. This is my water bottle. I take this pretty much everywhere with me. It goes with me in the car when I go to town. I put it in the stroller when I take my daughter Callie for a walk. I even take this on the airplane with me. This is a very special glass that we use just for special occasions like Christmas dinner or my girls like to do something we call fancy dinner where we um, have candles and music and we use our fancy glasses. In some ways, these are the same. I can drink water out of both of these, but in a lot of ways, they're different. It would not be wise for me to take this to, say, Cadence or Juliet's soccer game. I don't think it should even really be around Cali. You know, this is so breakable that I used to have a whole big set of them. But now I just have a few left because they broke when I was washing them. One time I was just setting it gently in the cabinet and it just, it broke. So we use it pretty much for set apart occasions. And in the Bible, when things are set apart, sometimes they're called holy. And God is holy. And something really cool about God is that he is perfect. He's never sinned. And everything he does is perfect. He's holy. And that's absolutely amazing to me. And that's one of the reasons we worship God, because he is holy. Sometimes people even bow down when they're worshiping God because they are showing him, God, you're so holy. You're so perfect. You're so amazing. In the Bible, there was a prophet named Isaiah. And Isaiah um, was called by God. And let me tell you that story. One time, Isaiah had a vision. And in that vision, he entered God's temple and God's robe that he was wearing filled the whole temple. And there were angels and there was like smoke. And Isaiah was so aware in that moment of how holy God is. He was also aware of how imperfect he was. He felt just almost shame for how imperfect he was. And as he was thinking that, an angel came up to him and took a hot coal and put it on his lips, and it cleansed his lips, and he was forgiven for all the wrong things he had done. That's so cool that God did that. And in the same moment that that happened, God spoke to Isaiah, and God said, who will go for us? God was looking for somebody to go and tell other people about Jesus. Whom can I send, God said. And you know what Isaiah said? Here I am, Lord. Send me. So today, as you're thinking about your glass, maybe you're going to have a water bottle or a cup at your table. Think about this glass and how it's set apart for special occasions. Think about how awesome God is. He is perfect. No one on earth is perfect. I'm sure not perfect. There's no one like our God. And as you're thinking about it, think about the question God might be asking you. Who will go for me? And I hope you say, here I am, God, send me. Let's pray together. God, you are so holy. You are so perfect. And God, we just love you and you love us. Father, thank you for all that you've called us to do. Thank you for the way that you desire to know us, to love us, God, and all the people that don't know you yet. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time.
Speechless in grace and mercy There is nowhere we can hide from your love You are steadfast, never failing You are faithful Our creation is in awe of who you are You're the healer of the sick Comfort for every heart that mourns For our King and our Savior forever For eternity we sing of all you've done For eternity we sing of all you've done against no one can stand between us and God with us God for us nothing can come against no one can stand between us can stand between us heart, it moves with compassion. There is life, there is healing in your love. You're the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And for eternity, we sing of all you've done. Stand 
to church online. Uh, we're so blessed that you're here to worship with us today. We want to remind you that if you're comfortable, we have house churches available. Uh, you can let us know. We'll get you plugged in to one of those. And of course, respecting um, if you're if you're still wanting to stay online. And so we're continuing to have conversations about what the future looks like. And, um, you know, we're actually really excited. We're excited for what God is doing. And um how he's moving in our church. So we're going to continue our study today in Matthew. If you want to open up your Bible to Matthew 17, verses 24 through 27. And so we do want to encourage you to go grab that Bible um, if you have one or on your phone or in the chat. And we are going to read the passage this week. Um, And so we're going to start in verse 24. Um, I want to remind you that last week was uh, Jesus confronting the lack of faith the disciples had. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you only have faith of a mustard seed, uh, nothing will be impossible for you, is what he said. And so we're coming right off the heels of that conversation into verse 24. And it says, After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes, from their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma (laughs) coin, take it and give it to them for my tax and for yours. And so, Cody, do you want to cue us into what this means and what this is about? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, this is a a really pivotal passage in in this tale of two kingdoms Mm. that Matthew is presenting to us through his narrative here. And so so we need to be thinking in terms of this world that we live in, right? This kingdom that we live in and this new kingdom, Mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is ushering in, right? And, And really this is about which which, uh, where do you live? Yeah. Like, which where, kingdom? Which one are you a citizen of fully, right? And so we see this, uh, what was the temple tax here, right? So, so, uh, the temple tax was meant to upkeep the temple, right? And so it started out as an honorable, good mm-hmm. thing, right? But as, uh, their society grew, there really became no need for the temple tax any longer. And so actually it was beginning to get abused to where the temple, um, they had so much money coming in that they, they made this elaborate gold vine that went throughout the temple and that's where the money started going and so there was a lot of controversy around the temple tax at this time in um, in their history and so a lot there was a lot of discussion around should we or shouldn't we give to that any longer is that something that we need to do mm. you know so there was a lot of a lot of discussion around this temple tax and so that's where we see this kind of tension happening uh, with with Peter saying, oh, yeah, yeah, he pays the he pays the temple tax, you know, and then he runs back and kind of confirms things with Jesus, right? Mm. But this is really <laughs> ultimately about, you know, um, what, what Jesus says, um, you know, what do you think, Simon, he asked, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes, from their own children or from others? So what he's trying to get across is that who are we, Simon? Who are we in this moment, right? Are we children of the king or are we citizens of some other kingdom? Or are we children of somebody else, right? Who are we, Simon? Mm -hmm. Is he's asking this question of him so that he can reveal uh, uh, Peter's heart in this moment, right? So... So we see that, of course, like uh, Jesus is trying to get across that we are children of a different kingdom. We are children of God and his kingdom. But, but we're still going to do this. 
we're going to pay this tax. And yeah. we're going to get into that yeah. a lot more in a moment. But then, of course, we see this uh, crazy moment where Jesus is like, okay, well, here's where we're going to get the money. Why don't you just go uh, cast a line into the into the water and uh, you're going to pull a fish out and there's going to be money in its mouth. Like normal Normal thing that happens, I, right? right? I might try that this weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. right? And so, but what's so beautiful about this is that this comes on the heels, right, mm -hmm. of Jesus saying for the fourth time, you a little faith, you guys. And so we don't see Peter say, uh, Jesus, I don't know if you know how fishing works because yeah. I'm a fisherman. Uh, and let me tell you that fish don't tend to Eat swim around coins. with coins in their mouth, right? <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't push back. He just goes and does it. Mm. He He obeys. Right. And he believes that what Jesus said is going to come to pass. And so there's a lot going on in this passage. And um, and Ashley, uh, tell us more. Yeah, I think what what we do when we approach this is we have to remember Matthew's whole thing, which was about describing the upside down kingdom mm -hmm. of Jesus, yeah. that the way that Jesus operates is completely flipped um, and fr from how the world operates. And we see that at work here. We see Jesus kind of pointing that out. And so we want to ask the question first, if we're going to say, what does this mean for us? Um, I think the first thing we consider is which kingdom are we living in? Mm. Which kingdom are you living in? And there's two choices, according to Jesus' explanation of yeah. this, uh, as, as children of God, mm -hmm. and that we operate inside of the heavenly kingdom, citizens yeah. of heaven. Mm -hmm. Scripture calls it that, that we're citizens of heaven, or we're in the world, but we're not of it. You might remember some of those scriptures, um, where it's kind of like we're a foreigner here, mm -hmm. walking around. Um so we're either that or we are living as a citizen of the world. And so we have to ask, which kingdom are you living in? And I think it's, you know, for, for believers, it's easy to quickly say, well, the kingdom of God. But there should be, I think, um, some evidence of that in our lives. And, and that, that does come out here in a little bit. Um, what Jesus says, you know, well, this is kind of how it operates in the kingdom. And, and as we've been studying Matthew, I would hope that we would see how Jesus describes citizens of the kingdom and put our lives up against that and say, well, is there mental, emotional, and physical evidence that I am living in the kingdom of Jesus? Because it's a choice. It is a choice to walk in relationship with him and to operate that way. So I, I also think we have to, if we're going to say we want to live in that kingdom, that Jesus is the king of that kingdom. So that it means Jesus is the king of our lives over everything else. Everything he says, everything he directs us to do comes uh, above anything else that we encounter. And I think that's a timely message for us in our country right now, specifically with the, just that pull to political mm. party allegiance. And not that it's wrong to have allegiance to a political party, not that it's wrong to stand and have values and things like that, but there's this pull um, that, that we can see happening where we're tempted to put our allegiance to, um, you know, those things above what Jesus says, mm -hmm. right? There are certain things. Jesus said, this is how it operates in the world. And we we hail him as the king, not anyone else, not any one president or a federal government leader or a local leader or anything. That yeah. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so he is our king. And like I said, it doesn't mean, you know, you're wrong for voting or, you know, we still have to operate in mm -hmm. this world. Talk about that. Um, but uh, we have to take a minute to say, is Jesus really the king of my life? Am I putting anything above his leadership? Yeah. Yeah. Everything that Jesus is talking about and, and trying mm -hmm. to teach to us is about expanding the heavenly kingdom. Yes. He's ushering in this new kingdom. It's not about trying to operate well in this old kingdom, right? It's about how do we operate well in the new kingdom that right. we're called to? Because as, as we accept Christ as Lord of our lives and we say, I give you full control, then we are under, we are citizens of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He is our Lord and Savior, right? And so we have to operate under his rules, under his laws, no longer under others, right? And so that can get a little strange, though, yes. for us to think about, right? Because where does it fall? Yeah, is yeah. there, so are we supposed to have a level of civil disobedience and that sort of a thing? And it kind of makes me think of, you know, there's these videos on the internet of uh, sovereign citizens, they're called, and mm -hmm. they'll get pulled over by the police for like maybe uh, speeding or driving without a license. And they'll say, uh, I'm a sovereign citizen, and so you can't, you can't arrest me. 
You can't arrest me. I'm a sovereign citizen. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm traveling. I'm not driving. And so they take all these like really obscure passages of the law and try to like apply it so that they can get out of a ticket essentially, right? <laughs> well, every single time, every single video where somebody's trying to pull this sovereign citizen thing, the police officer says, well, you're in Pennsylvania now. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the laws that you have you to adhere speak. to here. And you have to have a driver's license to drive. You're not traveling. You're driving a motor vehicle, right? And and they never get away with it. They never get away. They have to obey the civil law, even though they mm. want to believe that there's some sovereign citizen right. of some other, other nation of some sort, mm. right? But they can't get away with it because they're living under this law, under the law of this land, right? And that's where we kind of find ourselves. Yes. And that's the choice that we have. And that's what Jesus is really saying when he says, uh, you know, we don't don't have to pay these taxes according to to what what our father says and the kingdom that he is lord and of right we don't have to pay these taxes but as to not cause offense yeah. right we're going to do it we're going to pay these yes. taxes you know we're we're going to do it and you know what god's going to provide the means to do so mm-hmm. Because our, our desire is to be ambassadors of the kingdom that we're in. We don't want to, and we want to be good ambassadors. We don't want to be combative ambassadors. We want to live in harmony with those around us so that we can show them yes. how good this new kingdom is. We don't want to say, you know, we don't want to cause offense and turn people away from the new kingdom. We want to welcome them with open arms and say there's a better way. Yeah. You know, and so that's such a, a vital understanding, right? But here's the thing, right? This not wanting to cause offense, right? Uh, hmm. It's it's not uh, about making others upset. And it's not, a, it's, it's about living in harmony, but there's a line, right? There's a line that we have to figure out here. At what point do we, do we stop? You know, um, you know, we look at Daniel, right? He, there was the decree not to, not to pray and he prayed, right? And mm-hmm. what happened? He was thrown into a lion's den, but God provided for him in that, right? Uh, we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Uh, not they, down. they obey, mm-hmm. they disobeyed civil authority, right? They didn't bow down. And so here's what happened. They got thrown into the furnace. They could have died. Here's what happened. Mm-hmm. God, God spared them, right? But here's the thing, right? It wasn't just civil disobedience there. What was being uh, required of them was a forfeiture of their relationship with God. Yeah. And that is the line. That is always the line That's for That's the us. hill to die on. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. The hill that we have got to die on is when it comes to somebody asking us or trying to force us to forfeit our relationship with God. Because that's worth dying for. Yes. That's everything to us. In this kingdom that we're living in, everything is about our relationship with God. Everything, our whole life, we surrender everything in our lives for that relationship, yes. right? Jesus died so that the veil could be torn so that we could have that relationship. Mm-hmm. He died for the privilege of that relationship. And so we should never, ever forfeit that relationship mm-hmm. for any, any reason. But you know what? If the world that we're living in, if the, the foreign land that we as citizens of the kingdom of heaven are living in, wherever that is, is asking us to pay a tax and we say, oh, I can't believe that they're asking me to do that. I refuse to do that. Jesus is saying, don't cause offense. Yeah. I'm going to provide for you to pay that tax. I'm going to provide it for you. Yeah. You know, and so again, the line has to be our relationship, our relationship with God. Yeah. What What is this decision in any way causing that relationship to erode in any way, shape, or form. And that is where we know, no, I'm not going to do yeah, that. Yeah, you know, there's so many verses about obeying uh, authorities, yes. right? And and how God's at work and even mm-hmm. the authorities that are in place. And there's also yeah. verses that say, if make every effort to live at peace uh, with those around you and these mm-hmm. things, right? And so, um, you know, that's a tension that we're, we're absolutely walking right now. There's so oh, many yeah. things of like, should I do this? Should I not do this? It seems like the, there's so many voices speaking into, even within the church. As even, the church, yeah. Oh, voices of wisdom, right? Right. You have uh, some, I mean, just to get there, just let's just go there. There's some churches that are like, we're not going to meet till 2021 because, you know, that's being a good Samaritan. There's other churches saying, no, like we need to be meeting and we're doing everything we can and we need to. And there's there's people on both sides. Right. And so there's a tension. There's a tension that, that we're walking to in. sing or not to sing, to sing or not, not to right? sing, to wear a mask or not wear a mask. Yeah. There's all these all these things that we have got to figure out. Right. As citizens of of heaven, yeah. how do we operate? What do we do? And I think, Cody, you gave a great um, biblical approach to when it is absolutely a time to say, no, we will we will not sacrifice our relationship with God, our allegiance uh, to God. Um, and that that is a biblical 
uh, foundation for us. But there's an encouragement here in this too, is that God will provide every step of the way as you walk in that tension, you know, as a foreigner in this world. Because doesn't it just feel as Christians right now, as people of Jesus kingdom, that we are foreigners. It does. Yeah. I have that feeling yeah. that like, gosh, I, I'm looking around like this is interesting because uh, in, in Jesus kingdom, it's so different than it is here. Right. And I, and I strive every day to live inside that kingdom. And so it is a tension that we walk in. But but what I love about this passage is that Jesus sort of is like, don't fret about how you're going to operate in this world. I'm going to provide every step of the way for you. In fact, go fish, go do what you normally would do. And, you know, Peter is a fisherman, go do what you would normally do. And you're going to take that first fish and there's going to be this huge miracle of provision. Yeah. And it's going to be enough for you and enough for me. And mm-hmm. I'm always going to provide. Yeah. yeah absolutely amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so um, that's an encouragement to us that when we commit to living in God's kingdom as as mm-hmm. our king, with him as our king, and we say, um, you know, uh, here we are and we're going to expand your kingdom and we're we're going to not cause offense where we can't up into that line of allegiance to you. And um, there's a tension there because it costs us money and it costs us a lot emotionally sometimes and, and physically and all these things. Um, but God is going to provide every step of the way. And he did with a coin in the mouth of a fish. And I don't know where you're at, where you're struggling in this tension. Maybe it's just grace for a coworker uh, that you're near. Maybe it's a family member, strife and strained relationships and all of this. That You know, there's so many different things. God is going to provide wisdom. He's going to provide grace, peace, joy, all those fruits of the spirit that come rest when you're tired uh, from walking in that world. Provision, it says financially, he, he's going to provide for you as you walk out. Because when you take the mission of of God, the mission yeah. to expand the kingdom yeah. as your life mission, he is always going to give you what you need mm-hmm. to see that happen. What an encouragement that we live in freedom as Jesus people, as yeah. his children, and he gives us everything we need. And the Bible says everything we need for life and godliness. That's what he provides to us. Yeah. And I think it's such a key thing that you said, Ashley, in that, you know, absolutely God will provide these things for us, mm. right? He will provide us the ability to live in this foreign land now uh, and to and to not cause offense in these in these situations, right? He will provide that ability, but there is a requirement on us that we are operating as ambassadors of yes. the kingdom of heaven, though. Right. If we're firmly, if our citizenship is in the wrong place, then we're kind of out of reach sometimes mm-hmm. maybe of God's provision. Yes. We're telling yes. him, I'm not going to op- I'm not going to live in your kingdom. I'm going to live in this kingdom and I'm going to rely on the world's way yes. of providing for me. Right? And that's yeah. a dangerous place to be. Yeah. And so that tension that we live in, that tension that we feel of like, what do I do here? That tension is absolved by our faith. Amen. Our tension is absolved by saying, no, I, I, look, this situation seems impossible. School mm-hmm. seems impossible right now. Every option that's out there, look, the school is doing an incredible job. Red Rock Elementary is doing a fantastic mm-hmm. job yeah. like to, to, to try to meet all of these needs, but it is a tall order. It is a very difficult task. And you know what? Every, every situation, every option has its difficulties. And so many of us mm-hmm. are looking at it going like, I don't know, like, I'll just roll the dice, I guess, and see which one, you know. But you know what? Here's the thing. If we live in that tension for too long, then that means that we're living in the wrong kingdom. Yeah. Because our kids are in that kingdom, too. And we want to make sure our families are in the right kingdom. Yes. And so I want to live in God's kingdom and know, you know what, God? No matter what, even though this season seems impossible, and even though I'm worried about my kids' education, and even though I'm worried about how we're going to have the time to teach mm-hmm. our kids at home and all these things. I know that you're going to you're going to provide. Yes. Just as you provided uh the financial means to pay a tax in that day, you are going to provide the mental capabilities and the emotional capabilities and the spiritual capabilities to be able to get through this season mm-hmm. and that my kids are going to be okay, right? And in the They're midst of okay. it the kingdom's going to expand. Others uh, are going to see it. Others are going to see it. Others are going faith. to come to know. Our kids are going to watch it, you yeah. know, and and their faith will be built too. Yeah. And so our response to all these things should be like, God's got it. It's okay. Yes. We're going to be just fine. It shouldn't be, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh, what are we, uh, what yeah. are this or this, right? Our, 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 that means our faith is in the wrong place. 
we sh- we have to we have to land somewhere mm-hmm. and we got to land in one kingdom or the other yes. right and so so i just want to encourage uh, all of us today myself included right mm. oh, we're, yeah. we're in that tension oh, yeah. too right we're parents we get it you know but but that tension has to be absolved by our faith the level of our faith that god's got it under control god's going to see uh, all of us through this time as long as we're clinging to him right yeah and that goes last week they talked we talked about exercising our faith and, mm. and getting more and so yeah cody would you just pray for an increase uh, yes. of faith for everyone walk, watching yeah. uh, for you and for I. Yeah, I just want to say I've just had this picture lately of uh, in the midst of all this chaos that's going on that I walked outside one day and I just looked up at the blue sky and I just thought, man, how crazy that like it doesn't care. <laughs> you know, the, the sky is still blue. And I know that that may be cliche or whatever, but it just hit me like the sky is still blue. The sun is still here. There's still clouds in the sky. That has remained unchanged. And my God created all this. Mm-hmm. And he is so much higher yes. than those things. These issues are nothing to him. Mm-hmm. They're nothing to him. And so my prayer time lately has really been literally seeing God like he's this giant with his head above the clouds walking, but he's low enough that he is reaching down and holding my hand yeah, to good. walk through it all. And so I would just ask that you would join me in that kind of mindset as we pray right now, that we would just see God in his bigness, but we would also see God in his smallness as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. and just uh, and just thank him for that. So let's yeah. pray. Father God, thank you for, so much for who you are. Mm-hmm. Thank you that you are above every tension, you are above every difficulty, every hardship, everything that we see in front of us that seems insurmountable, you have already overcome it. You have already made a way for us because you love us. We are your dearly loved children and you are not going to let us stumble and fall as long as we are holding your hand. You will steady us. So right now, Father, right now, in faith, Mm. we choose to reach our hand up and take your hand and move forward. Mm. Not worrying about what's to come, not worrying about even the next steps to take, but knowing that you have already cleared the path for us and we don't have to worry about what's coming next. We just have to fix our eyes on you and know that you will handle it. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that moment by moment will lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. And that we have your ear, we have your voice in our ears that will tell us, this is the decision that I want you to make. This is a decision that I've set out for you. And even though that might look different than other people, that's okay because you have made a plan for us, even individually, Father. So we thank you and we take your hand and we say, we trust you, Father. We trust you to see us through all of these things. We believe that you are who you say you are. You are our good father. You are capable. You are mighty. And you are the overcomer. So we love you, Father. We love you. And we put all of our trust, all of our concerns, all of our fears, all of this tension into your hands. Mm -hmm. We love you. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Absolutely. We'll see you next Sunday. In my life, you know, finding Jesus and knowing the, the what a true relationship looks like uh, just has made a world of difference in my life. You know, we um, have been fortunate enough to have been part of Village Church since the early stages um, here in Red Rock, which is just amazing. And, you know, before that, we came from, from the Catholic Church, where um, in many ways, uh, it felt as if I was being pushed out of the church, which was hard. I grew up in that church and and I, I even at two times in my life worked uh, for the church. And so that was really tough. Um, and you know, what's what's so wonderful is just at r- right at just the right time, my wife was able to uh, uh, go to a women's uh, group, which was just so great, you know, and then really since honing in on that and finding that true 
relationship uh, with Jesus through all of my Village Church family, you know, just personally noticed a wide change in so many different things in our life, uh, including, you know, the way we deal with our finances to the way we pray before our family meals. And then, of course, um, now every night before bed, you know, the kids ask for a story and you'd think it'd be like some fun book. Sometimes it is. uh, But a lot of the time it's a Bible story, whether or not it's usually the same Bible story over and over. Um, But it's a comforting feeling uh, in our lives, just knowing that, you know, they're receiving that true relational um, Jesus through the actions of not only us, but, you know, our church family and and those that surround them on a daily basis. I will say um, we have absolutely 100% struggled um, in so many different aspects of our lives, uh, from raising kids to finances. I will say, um, most recently, uh, last year, um, I had a couple different job changes and that was really tough. That was, um, you know, tough from just a mental exhaustion point to, um, of course our finances, which was scary, right? Um, I, I, always considered myself as wanting to be that breadwinner for my family um, and provide for them. And that was really tough to um, take so many job changes. I will say at one point, um, you know, I would take my kids to the babysitter because we didn't want to lose our babysitter um, because if, you know, the kids have to go. And so I remember coming home one day and literally getting on my knees and praying like, God, like whatever is your will it's your way and i know that it's going to be good and here is my surrender because i can't control what's going to happen i can't control what's going to happen tomorrow i can't control what's happening later this afternoon but i know that if it's your will you're going to provide for us and my family each and every day and at that point i i actually remember um very vividly um you know a couple days later um, I was mopping my floor and I was like, please, like, I'm going to put my headphones in uh, instead of blaring music while mopping my floor because I, I, maybe I'm going to get the call today for a job. And, you know, it was a really, it was a job that's going to provide for my family and things of that nature. And sure enough, um, I was like three minutes into my mopping experience when I get the call. And I, I remember, uh, texting Cody and Ashley and Ashley was like I was literally praying for you earlier today like God please let this be his day and um, that that's a life-changing moment when you hear you know others are praying for you and you're at your wits end almost and here here comes this job here comes God with his victory for you honestly you know giving up um, is the hardest thing I think we as humans have to do and it is scary and it, you're walking into uncharted territory you feel like you're about to walk off a cliff but the best part is is knowing that Jesus is on the bottom of that cliff ready to catch you there is nothing we can't do right there is nothing that we can't accomplish through um, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just love that because I, I remember physically getting on to the, you know, my family room floor. Like, it, if this is it, this is it. Like, this is your deal, not mine. And the freedom from me letting go and taking control um, was so powerful uh, because now I don't have to worry right? Uh, It is in God's hands and through prayer and through scripture, like I know I'm going to get through this. If if somebody's going through the same thing, if anyone's going through through, um, hard times and and maybe has that control in in them, honestly, it's, it's complete surrender. And I know that that's a lot easier said than done. I know, trust me. But the best part is Um, I have never felt more powerful in giving it up when kneeling, praying to God than I have in my entire life. And I think that that is, that's the key is that we, we need to surrender to ourselves in order to 
um, truly see what God has in store for us. When, you know, all, all is said and done, we've surrendered, we've given it up, um, we may have what we think we want in our mind, um, and so we think we know what the outcome's going to be, but then God may take you on a different journey, and that journey is, it's not ours. You know, we're only conduits for what God wants us to do. And so I, I love, I love just that we get to be that conduit and that takes everyday surrender. That's not a one-time thing. It's, it's every day I wake up saying, I have to surrender today. I have to surrender to what you want, not what I want. to the world you created trading your crown for a cross you willingly died your innocent life paid the cost counting your status as nothing the king of all kings came to serve washing my feet Covering me with your love If more of you means less of me I'd take everything Yes, all of you is all I need I'd take So
Guess all of you is all I need. Take care.